From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Joining us on your MTN statewide news this Thursday, I'm Janelle Slade. Well, another Montana death tied to COVID-19 reported today, this one in Rosebud County and 193 new confirmed cases. The second largest jump since the pandemic began. Now the highest was 208 in July. Yellowstone County reports the highest increase today was 75. Now, although new cases rose, active cases are down in Montana by 170. Classes at the University of Montana began three weeks ago for the fall semester and as to be expected, confirmed cases of COVID-19 are beginning to surface on campus. In keeping the public informed, the Health Department will now post those university specific cases to its website. MTN's Megan Mannering has more. With a quick search online, you can find Missoula County COVID numbers now with that designated section for cases that pop up at the University of Montana. Incident Commander Cindy Farr says it took some time to bring this feature to the public. They first had to consult their legal team on the best way to offer transparency while still protecting the privacy of their patients. But we, we do want to be able to have that transparency and the university would like to be able to have that transparency. To date, there have been a total of six COVID-19 cases confirmed at UM. Three of those cases are considered active at this time. Each of those active cases has an average of 12 close contacts. Farr says this number isn't only standard, but it's encouraging. You know, that just because school started, we didn't see a huge spike in cases. You know, that it really, the cases remain pretty small and pretty manageable. And part of that is due to all of the planning that, you know, we, we worked with the university all throughout the summer and a very ver variety of different capacities. As it cools off outside and our options for recreation dwindle, FAR suspects we'll see more cases out of the university as students gather indoors. If and when our cases climb, the health department is ready to respond with new resources. Um, we are, we've now started doing rapid testing at our testing site. FAR says timing is everything in this pandemic. It's really helpful for us. It just means it's going to help us to control the spread even more quickly than what we've already been able to do. In Missoula, Megan Mannering, MTN News. Thanks, Megan. And that rapid testing machine is up and running at the county clinic there in Missoula. Well, Glacier High School officials in Kalispell are confirming the school's first positive coronavirus case. Superintendent Micah Hill says all close contacts with the positive case have been identified. If you haven't been contacted, you are not considered a close contact. At last night's school board meeting, Hill was met with individuals who were not wearing masks, protesting the mask requirement in Kalispell schools. For the health and safety of the school board, Hill said the school board stopped the meeting and postponed it until Wednesday. And Laurel families will be able to watch their loved ones take part in high school sports. Last night, the school board approved a plan that would allow each participant four plan fans per game. Visiting teams will also be allowed four fans for every coach and player. Now tonight in Billings, the first double A football game of the season is between defending state champions Bozeman and Billings senior. And we have breaking news at this hour just in School District 2 here in Billings overturned its policy this morning and will allow two family members per visiting player into the game. So you parents there in Bozeman, you want to know that? We'll have all of those details right now at mtnsports.com. Well, it should be a perfect night for some football. Let's check in with meteorologist Ed McIntosh and hear about that. Yeah, really nice weather across the region for today and again tomorrow, but we're looking at the increase in smoke as we get later into the weekend. Now, as far as fires go, nothing compares to the number of acres burned in 1988 when we had 1.2 million acres burned in Yellowstone Park alone. But you can see they've had their ups and downs here through Montana, uh, especially since the turn of the century. But overall, in the western portion of the, co of the country, where we get a lot of the wildfire smoke with a great increase in temperatures. We've also seen a big increase in the number of acres burned. So here's how things look across Montana, Northern Wyoming here today. Fairly quiet as far as smoke, but watch as we take it through the weekend. By Monday, we could be looking at a lot of smoke, even some perhaps unhealthy air, especially in those green shaded areas. Take a closer look at the short term forecast coming up in a few minutes. 
All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, there's another step forward following the Bridger Foothills fire. As of this morning, the entire Bridger Canyon Road is now open, but only for residents. Now that road remains closed to the public from Boylan Road to Brackett Creek. The Gallatin County Sheriff's Office says that includes no bikers and runners. Now residents should stay off the roads from 7 to 10 in the morning and from 6 to 8 in the evening so fire crews can do their jobs. The Bridger Foothills fire is holding it just over 7,000 acres burned. The cause of the fire remains unknown. No wildfires grow in the northwest, leaving behind a big path of destruction. Wind is spreading the flames, causing at least three deaths in Northern California and thousands to leave forced to leave their homes. Now that fire now threatening the town of Paradise that was largely destroyed by the campfire in 2018. And in Oregon, wind also an issue with hundreds of homes now destroyed. Usually Oregon's cool, wet climate keeps wildfires from growing too big. Well, a 13 year old boy's body has been recovered from the Yellowstone River. According to the Richland County Sheriff's Office, Ira Lawrence from Waterford, North Dakota, was last seen swimming in the Yellowstone River near Sydney on Saturday afternoon. He was swimming with a group and disappeared. After an intense search, Lawrence's body was recovered yesterday. Well, Vice President Mike Pence and top officials from the President Donald Trump's campaign will be in Bozeman on Monday. According to CNN, Pence will attend a private fundraiser. The day is also expected to include an event for Senator Steve Daines. Bozeman's mayor is officially stepping down after the city commission requested he resign. The move comes after hundreds of documents were released showing Chris Mayle mistreated city staff. Last night, the city's deputy mayor was sworn in. She gave Mayo some credit, saying he contributed greatly to the community. MTN spoke with the former mayor to get his thoughts on his resignation. I thought it was important that the voters deserve somebody who works hard for the city. And so every morning I would get up and try to be proactive and prepared as an elected official under the city management system that we have. Uh, unfortunately, some of the other city commissioners don't see it that way. Uh, and so uh, I don't want to be a disruption. Uh, our citizens need a lot of attention right now. There's a lot going on, as we all know, and so I'm resigning. In other news today, the Air Force awarded a $13.3 billion contract to grow part of Malmstrom Air Force Base. Northrop Grumman, a defense contractor, will begin replacing the aging ICBM missile system with the GBSD starting in 2023. While construction in Great Falls won't begin until 2026, the project and the development it brings will have a huge impact on the local economy. Malmstrom officials tell MTN they will begin working on environmental impact statements in October or November. Well, the Department of Agriculture says it's extending and expanding a critical food assistance program that has been providing free meals to millions of children during the coronavirus pandemic. The department will provide free meals to children who need assistance through December 31st. The changes include allowing meals to be served at any time throughout the day and allowing officials to distribute them in all areas and at no cost. Parents or guardians will also be able to pick up food for their children. Check in with your local school for that availability. Up next on your MTN New News, all aboard for the latest on the future of bringing back the passenger rail service to Southern Montana. But first, Ed's in next with your statewide weather forecast. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Welcome back to the new news. Temperatures will be on the rise over the course of the next few days, topping off Sunday into Monday, depending on where you are across the region. But only a few clouds, generally with sunshine, light winds, and we will see that smoke start to increase, as we talked about at the top of the newscast. And that could hold the temperatures back by a few degrees once we start getting into these warmer days. Noontime temperatures are mainly into the 60s, a few low 70s tucked up into northeastern Montana, but we could see the temperatures really pop as we get into the afternoon. Areas of western Montana as the high pressure area starts to move in and readings into the 50s and 60s through northern Wyoming, a little more struggle to start to warm up. Not getting much help from the winds today, although there is a little breeze down the Rocky Mountain front. Otherwise, we're generally looking less than 10 miles an hour, so we've got sunny, warm, 
warm, dry conditions with light winds here as of midday and almost cloud free across Montana and the Rocky Mountain West till we start checking out this upper low that's been parked down into Utah, Colorado. It's starting to make a little bit of a move up our way. It will start to affect our weather at least through the southeastern corner of the state in the coming days. So well, today we're mainly looking at temperatures relatively close to seasonal averages. The dry and warm conditions will continue to build and the temperatures will take a little bit of a rise tomorrow and continue to move up from that point on. Now that low moves up producing some clouds through eastern Wyoming and southeastern Montana and chance of even a light rain shower with that. Otherwise, we're not talking about much more than the smoke moving in uh, to, that will offset those warming temperatures in the sunshiny afternoons, still getting cool in the evenings into the 40s across much of the region by the first thing in the morning. Now, as we start taking this in towards Friday, we'll see the temperatures warm. By the time we really get into the weekend and early next week, the warmest temperatures for eastern Montana will likely occur on Monday. Things will start to level off for you as we look into central and western Montana and we're still going to be uh, warmer than average even as the front uh, starts to move in squashes that high pressure ridge a little bit by the time we get into early in the week. So the temperatures back down, but they're still going to be a little warmer than we would typically see. It's until maybe the middle of next week that we see the first signs of slightly cooler and slightly weather or wetter weather starting to move in. So for today, we'll look for most of the highs to be in the 70s across Montana and northern Wyoming. There'll be some 60s here into the mountain foothills, and we could be as warm as some low 80s in northwest Montana. There's the first signs of those clouds starting to move into eastern Wyoming, starting to influence the southeastern corner of the state with a few isolated showers tonight heading into tomorrow. And then for Friday, highs will be mainly in the mid 70s to mid 80s across the state, and we'll be looking at a sunshine and warm day other than a few clouds off towards the east. So here's how things shape up west of the divide. You're fairly consistent. Highs mainly in the 80s, lows mainly in the 40s through Saturday, and we could bump up close to 90 degrees around Missoula by Sunday afternoon before we see a downturn in the temperatures. Great Falls and Helena, sunshiny afternoons, the highs running a little warmer than average by tomorrow afternoon, and then we'll level off into the 80s of warm start to next week. Bozeman and Butte also with the dry conditions continuing some cooler temperatures around Butte first thing in the morning, but even there we'll start to see a little bit of an upturn by the end of the weekend and the eastern plains again sunshine and warm could be close to even record high temperatures Billings within a few degrees of record high on Monday. There's a look at the weather back to you. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, looking beyond the pandemic, county leaders from across the state are gearing up for detailed discussions next week on how to bring passenger rail service back to southern Montana. MTN's Dennis Bragg reports. Originally, the Passenger Rail Summit was being planned for last spring as Missoula County Commissioner Dave Strohmeyer and his colleagues spent time last winter advancing discussions from last year. COVID threw a little bit of a, a wrench into the works here. We had originally assumed that this would happen back in April and that the summit would help build momentum and conversation among counties to get this over the finish line. And that progress has been steady throughout the summer as Missoula and several other counties passed resolutions supporting the formation of the Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority. The goal is to bring passenger rail back to the southern route where Amtrak stopped running more than 40 years ago. Several counties have either passed joint resolutions or are participating. And since only two are needed under Montana law, it appears the idea has left the station. We've crossed the finish line, and, uh, uh, and, and so we will go into the summit not, uh, not wondering if uh, or, or probably even when, but being able to actually introduce the rail authority uh, to folks who are participating in that event. You might get the impression that this drive to restore passenger rail service is being pushed by Missoula and the other large counties, but Strohmeyer says, in fact, a lot of the momentum is coming from Montana's smaller counties. What they see in this is an opportunity for economic development that will help them diversify their, their economies and, and provide services to their communities. So it's definitely not just an urban thing. It's urban and rural uh, across the 630 miles that span the state of Montana. In Missoula, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Thanks, Dennis, and the Passenger Rail Summit will be held virtually next Thursday, September 17th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Your latest Ag News is next with Russell Nimitz. Stay with us. Here's your Farm and Ranch Report from the Montana Ag Network. Hi, everybody. It's time for your Farm and Ranch News. Well, the U.S. Cattlemen's Association has sent a letter to leaders at the USDA 
Over concerns associated with contaminated Mexican cattle, lamb, poultry, and swine, this week I talked with the USCA's President Brooke Miller, who told me allowing contaminated meat into our borders is unacceptable for a nation that prides itself on producing the highest quality, most sustainable, and safest beef in the world. American consumers overwhelmingly feel that cattle producers in this country produce the safest and best product in the world. And because of loopholes or uh, laws at the USDA level, there's no clear and accurate labeling uh, on country of origin on the meat products. As the law currently stands, uh, importers can bring in either live animals or fresh uh, beef from foreign countries. And as long as it's transformed significantly, according to uh, the USDA regulations, it can be labeled as product of the USA. And their definition of significant transformation uh, could be as something as simple as repackaging or slicing the meat. And he says it's examples like this of why USCA continues to push for mandatory country of origin labeling. This latest problem with contaminated beef in Mexico is just another glaring example of why we need truthful and accurate labeling, uh, not only for the consumers so they know they have confidence in what they're eating is safe and pure, uh, but also so that American ranchers and farmers can differentiate their product, which we can't currently do. Now, in the meantime, the U.S. Cattlemen's Association has asked USDA to seriously evaluate the public health risks associated with importing beef and meat out of Mexico, including conducting an equivalence verification to help ensure that Mexico is still maintaining a regulatory food safety inspection system that's right on par with what we have here in the United States. Well, stay with us. We'll have more ag news right after this. Well, this week, Montana Senator Steve Daines testified in a Senate Environment and Public Works Committee hearing in support of the Grizzly Bear State Management Act, which would delist the grizzly bear in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and return management of the species back to the states of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming, and also prevent further obstruction in the courts. This bill reissues the science-based decision to delist the grizzly bear in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and prevents future obstruction and uncertainty for bear management. Opponents of this bill would lead you to believe that the grizzly bear won't receive any protections if they are delisted. That is flat out false. Nothing could be further from the truth. Senator Daines is a co-sponsor of the bill, which was introduced in February of 2019 by Wyoming Senator Mike Enzi. Other co-sponsors include Wyoming Senator John Barrasso and Idaho Senators James Risch and Mike Crapo. Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney introduced an identical companion bill in the House last year as well. By the way, Senator Daines has also sent a letter to U.S. Fish and Wildlife Director Aurelia Skipwith inviting her back to Montana to discuss grizzly bear recovery and management across Big Sky Country. That's a look at your farm and ranch news. Have a great day. All right, thanks so much, Russell. And one more time for all of our Bozeman parents out there, football parents, School District 2 in Billings today changed its policy, overturned its policy this morning and will allow two family members per visiting player to tonight's game and moving forward. So that's two family members from Bozeman, from the Bozeman players we're going to be at Dayless Stadium tonight in Billings. Last minute road trip. Last minute road trip, but I bet some happy parents. I'm sure, yeah, a lot of fans and the players too. Yes. Take a look and see what's happening across the state. Temperatures are going to be very mild over the course of the next few days. Keep in mind, average highs would be in the 70s, lows in the upper 30s and 40s, and consistently looking at 70s, 80s for the highs. Great Falls, Helena, off to a little cooler day today, but that's average for this time of the year. The real warm air starts to build in over the next few days. Monday into Tuesday, we could see well, the cold front moving through. The winds increase a little bit. That could increase the fire risk somewhat, but also expect an increase in wildfire smoke through the weekend. Thanks, Ed. Have a great day.